So, last class we were discussing about the flow regime in a gas liquid system and we have discussed about the different regimes, uh, advantages of different regimes, uh, drawbacks in the different regimes and how the different regimes changes uh, uh, with the change in the diameter or change in the orientation of the pipelines and implications if you do not operate in the uh, desired regimes like this is the blockage which we have discussed here. Now, moving towards the next phase and that is about the uh, pneumatic conveying which we say or kind of a transportation of the solids. So, right, we, what we have discussed is the gas liquid, now what we are going to discuss is the gas solid and liquid solid. Now, most of the industries uh, we use to con we have to transport the solid from one place to another place. Now, there is two way of doing that because we know that the solid it is not like a fluid which you can pump. So, either you have to push the solid with by using air or ga any gas or by liquid or you have to physically transport it. So, physically transport means you have to transport it through the belt conveyor, bucket conveyor or by using some truck or any transporting medium. So, belt conveyor, bucket conveyor I think you have already done in the mechanical operation lab, uh, course uh, which is not part of the multi-phase flow, but whatever we are mostly interested is in the pneumatic conveying. Now, this is widely used in many industries to convey the solid from one place to another place particularly when the solid is uh, kind of something which you cannot convey through the belt. It means you cannot use it the open media whether the solid will get degraded or it will emit something to the atmosphere. So, one need to do the pneumatic conveying in that place. So, pneumatic conveying is nothing but whatever I said is the transportation of the dry material uh, through pipeline using air or gas as a motive force. So, mostly it is air which is compressed air or air at a lower pressure that depends on that how much you have to energy you require to transport the solid from one place to another place or sometimes it is the gas which is being say uh, like a flue gases which is being immersed outside of the boiler and you want to transport the ash which is generated in the combustor or kind uh, combustor uh, from one location to another location. So, pneumatic conveying is widely used and if suppose instead of air or gas if you use liquid as a media then it is called hydraulic conveying. So, both is the conveying means is very clear the transporting the solid from one location to another location. As I said that it has several advantages like material can be picked up from multiple sources and delivered to the multiple destination. Now, this is a very very important point. So, suppose if I have two or three locations where I have same material which is being generated or different material which is being generated and I have to dump at a particular location I can use the pneumatic conveying if you are using belt conveyor or any other thing you have to have a different uh, conveyor system there. And the most important and significant point why it is being used that no dust is emitted to the environment. So, suppose if ash I am transferring through the belt conveyor or any of this fine materials which I am transferring from the belt conveyor and to open to the atmosphere and if the wind speed changes the dust or the this ash particle can suspend into the atmosphere which is hazardous to the health. So, that is why the pneumatic conveying is being used and this is the one of the most important thing because it is an environmental friendly process where you do not emit anything to the environment. Now, it has definitely several drawbacks compared to the advantage. The advantage main advantage is the environment concern, but as we know that, know that if you have to push the solids you require high energy. So, that is the first disadvantage that you have high specific power consumption. You will have a very high power consumption because you have to push the solid from one place to another place. Now, you think about if I have 10 kg ash and if I ask you to pull the ash from this place to from a particular location to say 100 meter how much power you have to uh, spend or how much energy you have to spend to pull that 100 kg of the ash from one location to an, uh, another location. Approximately similar if suppose I want to transfer the 100 kg of ash from the pneumatic conveying I have to use the similar kind of a power. So, it is a waste of energy or you can say the high energy requirement is there and that is the major disadvantage of the pneumatic conveying. Uh, potential particle breakage and degradation can occur because now you are putting a lot of energy you have. Uh, so, if you have to do that energy will come in form of the velocity or the kinetic energy. So, it means you have to operate the system at a very high energy or high kinetic uh, velocity. In that case the uh, this uh, particle can degrade can because of the friction of the wall it can either degrade it can even break it can even damage the pipeline through which it is moving. 
So, that is the another problem that uh, so particle can break or can change the shape or it can also degrade because of the high frictional energy generated. High wear rate of uh, co components as I said that suppose there is a pipeline and I am pushing the solid particles from this near the wall the friction rate will be very high and because of that the erosion will take place and the particle this pipeline will damage over the time or it will get eroded. So, that is why it is being used for short distance and that short distance is in the range of typically 3000 feet or you can say that the 1000 meter in uh, respectively. So, 1 kilometer in the range and uh, unstable flow is the most disadvantage and how to make the flow stable that what we are going to see in this course. So, the flow is mostly unstable and if you just a small change in the velocity will change your flow dynamics completely and we will see that you may change from the moving condition, moving solid condition to the choked solid condition it means nothing will move at all. So, the flow dynamics maintaining the flow dynamics itself, itself is a very challenging and that is also a drawback because it is not very easy to operate the pneumatic conveying system. So, now first let us discuss about the hydraulic conveying which we say that liquid solid system. So, in liquid solid system suppose if I have to convey the solid from one location to another location what will happen if the liquid velocity is high and solid fraction is lower. So, you can see that these curves either the liquid velocity you are keep on increase uh, reducing or solid uh, loading you are keep on increasing. So, if your liquid velocity is high or solid loading is low. So, I will say that this is say liquid is velocity is high. or low solid loading. Then what will happen that your solid will be uniformly suspended across the pipeline and a smooth flow of the pipe uh, of the solids will take place and that is called homogeneous regime. Now, either you increase the uh, solid loading here increase the solid loading. or decrease the liquid velocity. In any of these two either you want in to increase the solid loading you want to transfer more solid or you are reducing the liquid velocity what you will see you will see that some of the solid will start getting suspend uh, settled down and that is called heterogeneous regime where some of the solids will be suspended which will be flowing uniformly and some of the solid will start settling. So, that is called heterogeneous regime. If you further increase the solid loading, it means increase again the solid loading is increasing. So, increase further increase solid loading or decrease the liquid velocity, then what will happen? that the solid will get settled and only few solid will be suspended in the liquid and both will be moving. So, solid gets settled does not mean that it is not moving, it will be moving still and some of this void fraction will not be as a packed bed void fraction, it will be moving weight kind of. So, the both the solids are moving and liquid is moving. So, liquid is being pushed, uh, solid is being pushed by the liquid, but it will be mostly settled at the bottom. That regime is called saltation or moving bed regime. Now, this is the saltation regime which is being actually moving as uh, the solids are moving as a pack bed and the liquid is being pushed. So, if you further increase the solid loading you will get that what will happen that now the energy will be reduced the total energy which will be gained by the solid from the liquid it will be kind of reduced. So, that is why the solid will start getting settled it will now no more suspended and you will see that the solid are moving like a pack bed its regime is called saltation and still the solid will be transported. If you further reduce the uh, liquid velocity or increase the solid bed then what you will see is a static bed kind of a condition and the solid transportation will reduce like anything. So, your solid will move, but it will be very slow rate it will move and only the solid which are suspended in the liquid on the top side it will be moving most of the solid will be like a packed bed. So, that these are the four regimes you operate uh, you found if you transport in the hydraulic conveying room conveying regime. Uh, it is homogeneous, heterogeneous, moving bed or static bed. Now, this can be achieved either by reducing the liquid velocity or increasing the solid loading. So, in that way the overall liquid uh, kind of uh, hydraulic conveying can take place.
Now, coming back uh, moving back to kind of uh, forward to pneumatic conveying which is for the gas solid transportation and which is of major interest uh, in industry compared to the hydraulic conveying. Hydraulic conveying is being used, but at a very limited places. Uh, mostly the pneumatic conveying is being used where the gas solid flows uh, gas is being used to push the solid or to convey the solid from one location to another location. Now, there are different regimes. Now, you see the regimes are very high compared to the liquid solid regimes. So, the first is again the same either it will be the same either you are decreasing the velocity from once you are moving from the top to the bottom you are decreasing the velocity or in other word you can say that I am increasing the solid loading. So, both are same either you are decreasing the velocity or increasing the solid loading you will see these regimes. So, right now whatever we are discussing is based on the decreasing the gas velocity. Now, if the gas velocity is very high you will get a homogeneous flow it means what the solid will be suspended across the bed like this and uh, across the whole pipeline and it will be moving. So, you will see the smooth transportation of the solid and that is called homogeneous bed. If you further reduce the velocity of the gas then what will happen again some solid will start getting settled and it is called degenerated homogeneous uh, flow. It means the homogeneous flow is now being kind of uh, being uh, transferred to the heterogeneous or you can say that is a start of heterogeneous flow. So, that is why we call it degenerated homogeneous flow where some solids you can see that is now started settling or going towards the bottom of the solid uh, pipeline. Uh, the solid concentration is high compared to the top part and then if you further reduce the solids then what will happen you will see the dunes kind of a structure will be formed solid dunes. It means what the solid is being settled down and they are forming a clusters or dunes. In and the flow is taking place. So, some of the solids are suspended, some of the solids are formed dunes which being settled. So, solid fraction near the lower wall is further increased and it is still moving. Now, if you further reduce the velocity the dunes height will keep on increasing and more and more solid will come and settle down bottom side. So, you see that the dune height is increasing and number of solids at the bottom portion of the pipeline is increasing. So, you will see that dune flow this is called the complete dune flow. Now, if you further reduce the velocity again what will happen that the more and more solid will be settled and we called it as a degenerated dune flow. So, we will see a lump of the solid which is actually moving together. Okay. So, these are the lumps and this, this lumps is actually keep on increasing. So, this is called degenerated dunes flow. Now, if you further reduce the velocity now you will see that the whole pipeline is now being slugged. So, the similar why we call it the slug flow because the size of the dune is equivalent or similar to the size of the pipeline. So, we call it as a solid plug. So, slug the way we were talking about is the gas slug or liquid slug here we are talking about the solid slug. So, solid will form a slug a big shape and the diameter of this it will be equivalent to the or equal to the diameter of the pipeline through which the transportation is taking place and you will see that this whole slug is actually moving. Now, if you further reduce the velocity then the slug will actually keep on increasing and we, this we call as a slug flow completely. And if you further reduce the velocity you will say the degenerated slug flow it means now you will see the whole pipeline is actually being filled with the solids and you will have very small patches of the air you will see where the solid is being suspended. Most of the time you will see a slug the so whole pipeline will be filled with the solids. If you further reduce the velocity you will see the ripple flow. It means it is like a complete solid now and you will see that only at the top some boundaries is being emerges if you will see this boundary which I am just showing here and it is called ripple flow because it make a ripple kind of a structure. So, now the only the gases are flowing on the top and the solid is being now fixed at the bottom. If you further reduce the velocity then you will not see any flow of the gas you will see that the complete pipe is plugged. So, it is completely filled with the solid and so, what will happen in this case definitely the flow will be completely stopped and you will not see any solid movement at all. So, if you keep on reducing the gas velocity by uh, at the same condition by sort of the same solid loading you will see these condition to be occur or other way you can also get the same if you fix the gas velocity, but keep on increasing the solid loading you will see exactly the same thing is happening. So, these are the conditions and these are the different flow regimes is occurs and that is why operating a pneumatic conveying is very very tough 
and that is what I said that earlier that it is not a, a stable flow, it is unstable operation and a small change in the velocity can change from complete moving bed to a complete plug bed where the move, no movement is taking place. Now, most of the solids these two ripple flow and plug flow the solid movement is completely stopped and hence no transportation take place. For most of the material this happens because it is so plugged that it is almost impossible to move anything inside. So, this is kind of uh, something which is completely undesirable regimes because here you will not see any movement of the solid. These are the called dilute flow regime. Now, if you see that where I have cut this box, I have cut this box on immature dune flow and on the top parts where the solid is homogeneously filled here. So, these are the dilute uh, dilute phase, the bottom phase of bottom part of the uh, this uh, immature uh, dune flow is not the dilute flow at all, it is started the dense phase. So, we have already discussed what is called dilute flow, what is called dense phase flow. So, if you see that these are the dilute phase flow and rest everything is the dense phase flow. Now, the flow pattern inside does not only depend on the velocity or the solid loading, it also depends on the many other factor and that again make the system more complicated and difficult to operate and design. The first thing which also matters is the bulk density that the solids which we are transporting, what is the density of that and what is the bulk density of the solid, we have already defined the bulk density. Then what is the particle size, particle shape, this also is matters that what is the size of the particles, if your size is particle size is very big or if your particle size is very small, very fine, what is the shape of the particle, now why it depends on the particle size and shape, we will discuss it uh, the, some after some slides. Then the particle size distribution is also very important, so most of the time we design the system for a uniform solid size based on this outer mean diameter or weight average diameter. But the particle distribution is also very important. Suppose if you have to design a pneumatic system for a system which is very narrow distributed, particle size is very narrow distributed, and a system where the distribution is very wide, your uh, design of the pneumatic conveying system will be completely different because there will be some bigger size particles which may start uh, settling down uh, even at a lower velocity or even at a higher velocity. So, uh, this is kind of uh, very difficult to understand and uh, that is why the particle distribution plays also a very critical role in designing this kind of a system. Then the particle density, uh, bulk density also play a role and particle density also play a role and these two we will discuss that how it plays a role and it actually classify the type of the particles you have. The cohesiveness uh, of the particle is also playing a role, suppose if particles are cohesive in nature and they comes and agglomerate over the time, then what will happen? Your particle uh, diameter will keep on changing with the length of the pipeline and you will see the regime transition uh, as you will move forward. The way we have discussed the two phase flow evolution, where the kind of the one phase is being the gas liquid is being transported or kind of converted to the gas phase. So, what will happen over the pipe length? You will see the transition in the flow regime. Similarly, if the particle is cohesive in nature, they are agglomerative in nature, they are forming agglomerates, then what will happen? Their size will change over the length and if their size will change over the length, you will see the regime will transfer because now the momentum requirement will be different. Moisture content is again a very uh, this kind of uh, important parameter because if the solid is moist or wet then it will have a different density altogether and they will be very susceptible to the agglomeration. The hardness is matters, now why you feel that hardness is matter because if the particles are very hard they will have a very big good erosion properties. So, they will erode the pipeline, so you should understand that what is the hardness of the pipeline, uh, hardness of the particle and the temperature sensitivity is very very critical for the pneumatic conveying because of the frictional losses as we are transferring the solid we are operating the system at a very high velocity as I said earlier. The frictional losses is going to be high and because of the frictional losses the, there will be some temperature generation or some temperature rise. So, we need to understand that the solid should not be very highly temperature sensitive because if they will be very temperature sensitive then what will happen there will be uh, degradation of the solid will take place. So, all these things we need to take care, not only the velocity and solid loading, all these parameters also plays a equally important role uh, in understanding the pneumatic conveying. Now, the flow of fines, as I said that the particle size also matters. So, why it matters? Because the flow of fines and flow of the coarse particles are different 
and the flow regimes for the fines uh, is also different and flow regime in the case of the coarse particle is different. So, some of the regimes you will not see in the coarse particles which you, you can see in the fine and some of the regimes you will not see in the fine particles which you can see in the coarse. So, in the fine particles if you have very fine uh, particles then what will happen that uh, what are the regimes which are very um, kind of commonly seen is the homogeneous uh, regime which is the dilute phase because the particles are very small. So, they will be suspended in the particle even at a lower velocity. So, it will be kind of a uniformly suspended. If you decrease the velocity then what will happen? The solid will get settled down and you will see a small layer of the packed solid uh, near the bottom and that is called the saltation regime. So, it means what is happening now it is a kind of a moving bed of the solid which is moving. If you further reduce the velocity then you will see the dunes you will see the dune shapes and that is called the dune flow. So, some of the solid will be suspended which will be flowing on the top and most of some of the solids will be kind of uh, settled down and which will be moving like a dune and uh, so called a dune flow. And if you further reduce the velocity then you will see a slug or plug of the solids and what will happen that the solid loading at this conditions will be very very high and you will see some recirculation of the gases along this uh, bed because this is completely filled. So, what will happen some of the gases will be passed through here, some of the gases which are coming from the bottom will pass through here, some of the gases will go and come back is kind of it will be recirculated along this bed. So, there will be some recirculation of the solids will also be seen, uh, recirculation of the gases will also be seen and this slug will be moving. So, this slug can move if the further reduce the velocity it will be completely choked and there will be no movement at all. So, these are the uh, kind of some regimes which are being find in the fine particles. So, you can see that some of the regimes like uh, immature dunes, ripple flow and all those things is you get rid of for the very fine particles. Now, if you have a coarse particles then what will happen the regimes will actually get further simplified and you will get either the homogeneous flow regime. So, for the coarse particle the velocity should be very high to get the homogeneous regime. So, all the particles will be uniformly suspended. Now, if you reduce the velocity gas velocity what will happen the solid will immediately get settled and you will see the two kind of a phase flow one is the top the gases are flowing and the bottom the liquid will be uh, solid will be flowing and that is called again saltation regime where the solids are actually moving like a pack bed. So, it will be a moving bed regimes if you further reduce the velocity you will see kind of a moving bed or dunes kind of a flow which will be completely moving or you will get a fluidized bed. So, in which the solids actually is moving and the solid fraction is increased, but the solid fraction will be in the range of 0.4 or 0.5. So, epsilon solid will be in the range of say around 0.4 or to 0.5. So, you will see this kind of a flow where this will be still moving. I am discussing only those regimes where the flow is taking place. If you further reduce the velocity, you will get the ripple flow and plug, uh, complete plug flow where the solid will not move at all. So, these are the regimes you will see in the coarse uh, particle conveying. The other regimes whatever I have discussed you will see that was the fine particles are conveying, but if you will try to understand then the most of the solids are actually being conveyed in these two regimes. Here the overall solid con the amount of the solid which is being transported is very very less because solids are uniformly distributed and you require a very high velocity here to operate because if the velocity will be low then solid will not be suspended. So, homogeneous regime or dilute regime that is why is very 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 few cases people use this for the transportation of the solids because it require very high energy and transport less amount of the solids compared to the saltation regime or moving bed regime of fluidized bed regime where the amount of the solid being transferred is very high at lower energy. Now, the whole solid before moving to the pneumatic conveying further the whole solid actually is being classified and uh, in four groups that is called group A, group B, group C, group D by Geldart in 1972. This is a major work which actually classify the whole solids in four parts. And that is the region that because of this delta R chart we came to know that the solid particle size and solid density is a factor which is going to tell that what are the regimes we are going to operate and the pneumatic conveying about the behavior of the pneumatic conveying. So, what Gildart did actually Gildart had classified the whole solids whatever is available in four parts group A which is called fine powders, group B which is called granules coarse granules group C which is cohesive particle and group D which is very very big particle or highly permeable particle. Now, 
he plotted the graph between the dp which is the mean diameter of the particle versus the rho p minus rho f where rho p is the particle density this is the particle density and rho f is the fluid density. So, this chart is valid for the gas solid uh, flow for the liquid solid flow both the flow it is valid only the fluid density will be the gas density in case of the gas solid flow and then it will be equal to the liquid density in case of the liquid solid flow. So, he divide the whole solids in this four part based on the rho p minus rho f and d p and he found certain boundaries. Now, this boundaries are not fixed is ambiguous in nature and that depends on the particle size distribution and non that whether the particle is spherical or non spherical based on that the regimes boundaries are not very fixed and later on Dixon has found the another boundary. So, the dotted boundaries whatever you are seeing is here for the Gildart particle and like this this is for the Gildart particle and continuous line is for the Dixon particle. So, Dixon boundaries. So, if you see that Dixon boundaries and Gildart boundaries there is certain difference. So, at the boundary lines you are not very sure that whether you are in group A or group B. So, the boundary line particles is always dangerous to operate and it can behave like a group A or it can also behave like a group B. So, suppose the particle which is somewhere here as per Gildart classification it can behave like a Gildart A ideally it should behave as a Gildart A, but as per Dixon it will be Gildart B and it has been seen that it can behave in any way it can either behave as a Gildart A particle or Gildart B particle. Now, what is this classification all about? So, what he did he put the x axis as a diameter of the particle y axis as a density difference between the particle uh, density to the fluid density. Now, for very fine particles all density does not matter that what is rho p minus rho f if the particle size is very very small say less than 20 micron they comes in the group C it means they are cohesive in nature. So, what will happen they will cohese and they will form a big clusters of the particles okay. and because of that the transportation of this kind of a solid is very very difficult. Group A is the best to transport it are fine particles which has a density uh, kind of diameter which is more than 20 to 25 micron and density in the range of 500 to 5000 micron. The size of the particle uh, kind of if you keep on increasing the size of the particle uh, then what will happen it will try to move from group A to group B and any particle which is more than say 500 or 600 micron of a density difference of around 1000. So, if you are operating a gas solid you will be in a group B. So, it will be kind of a group B particle then if you further move down if you further increase the velocity uh, sorry further increase the particle size you will go to the group D size. So, the different particle have a different characteristics as I said here that A is fine particle B is cohes uh, coarse granular C is cohesive D is big particle and as per the Dixon what it can be further classified as A it means there is no slugging. So, if you have a group A particle you will not see any slug flow group B you will see the weak axiometry slug or very weak dune flow you will see in the group B particle. Group C particle the same uh, this is very cohesive in the nature. So, the transportation of this kind of a particle is very very challenging and group D is very highly susceptible to the slug conditions. So, it will make the slug flow very fast. So, that is the way it has been classified and if you see from the transportation characteristics of each of this group A particle. So, if you have group A particle it can be conveyed in the fluidized bed mode okay, and can easily convey do not form any slug naturally. So, in flu, uh, so group A particle you can convey very easily in the fluidized bed mode it means you can keep your solid loading very high you will not see any slug condition. So, the chances of complete stop of the flow is very very low. Group B is difficult to convey uh, in conventional dense phase flow. So, it is kind of uh, if you want to convey in case of the like a fluidized bed or any conventional flow it will be difficult it is unsteady unpredictable flow formation can possible and the pipeline vibration will be very very high because these particles are coarse particles. So, it can form plug at any time if you do not maintain the condition properly it will just kind of settle down at the bottom and it will form a plug flow. So, this kind of a flow is uh, kind of it is very difficult to operate and you will see the uh, kind of uh, uh, the vibration a lot because the size particle is very big the energy requirement is also very big. So, your pipe will be keep on fluctuating or vibrating. Group C it is very very difficult to convey because they are cohesive in nature 
conventional drain stage uh, method cannot be used here to like a slug flow or something it cannot be used here. Uh, they are kind of impermeable plug is being formed. So, they are cohesive in nature. So, they form a plug which is impermeable. So, even the gases will not come through it and it will stop the flow completely and kind of some special techniques are needed to transfer this kind of a particle. Mostly these kind of a particles are transferred in the slurry phase by using the screw pump or something. So, this C group C type of particle is very very difficult to convey. Then group D is natural slugging ability and high permeability. So, this is the major thing which helps in the transportation of the solid. So, they make a slug, but they are permeable in nature because the particle size is very very big and they are permeable. So, because they are permeable they can easily transferred in form of the slug big slug where the air will be passing through in. Uh, so, that what will happen the movement will take place and you will see the dense phase conveying easily and you can transfer it in form of the slug. It is very easy that is what I said that to convey this kind of a particle the group D particle if you want to move from one place to another place it is very easy. They will form a big slug and with the very low velocity in form of the slug you can move them. So, this is the way the solid uh, conveying characteristic take place. So, group A and group D is relatively easier to convey. Group B is difficult to convey, but still it can be conveyed through the pneumatic conveying. Group C is very, very difficult. It will be cohesive nature and you need a special technique to major uh, to convey the group C particles. So, what is problem is the group B and if you have a group B particles, you have to be very careful because it can be uh, it can make the flow unstable at any time and you can see that plug formation and which can block the whole flow altogether. So, the whole pneumatic conveying as I said the dilute phase and dense phase is being divided in two part. One is the dilute phase conveying and other one is the dense phase conveying. As the name suggests dilute phase conveying and we have already discussed it that the dilute phase conveying means the overall discrete phase fraction is very very less. Here the discrete phase fraction or solid fraction should be less than 1 percent then it is called the dilute phase conveying. You require a very high velocity to maintain the dilute phase conveying because this is homogeneous it means all the particles are suspended or is just started immature uh, this uh, kind of uh, homogeneous. It means it just started settling or the top part of the dunes flow. It means so that is what I just discussed here. So, these three regimes are called the dilute phase regimes here whatever we are seeing here. In all this the particles are suspended and because the particles are suspended you require a very high velocity and we require a velocity for this kind of a suspension around roughly around 20 meter per second or more than that. And solid concentration should be very very low less than 1 percent. The pressure drop uh, per unit length will also be very low here and that is the reason why it, the pressure drop is very low because the amount of the solid used is very very low. So, ideally you will see the pressure drop which will be very close to the pressure drop of the gas phase and gas phase pressure drop will be only because of the friction. So, what will happen that overall pressure drop in this kind of flow will be very very low, but the amount of the solid being transferred per unit energy whatever you are using or per unit the gas whatever you are sweeping will be very very low. So, that is why because the energy loss is very very high it is used for the very short routes okay. and most importantly where you need the continuous transport of the solid because other transportation where it is because transported in form of the dunes or slug or as a moving bed what you will see you will see the fluctuations in the solid. So, sometimes a slug will flow a slug will come other than time there will be no slug. So, it suppose there is a pipeline and the particle is moving like a slug like something like this. So, what you will see at the outlet you will see a pulsation flow. So, sometimes you will get the solids sometimes you will not get the solids. So, pneumatic conveying if you are having a dilute phase where the particle is uniformly suspended then what will happen you will see the continuous flow of the solids. So, suppose if it is feeder to any reactor where this is used as a reactant solid are used as a reactant or as a catalyst we need a dilute phase because the overall the flow should be continuous. So, this is there the solid particles behaves as a individuals because they are settled down they are kind of they are not interacting with each other their fraction is very very low. So, you can see that the particle particle interactions are very very low here in this case and they are behaving like a individual solids which is suspended in the gas. It can be used in the pressure medium it can be used in the vacuum medium you can use the pressure and vacuum system uh, combination of both. It means you can transfer this gas okay, either by using some compressor that will be called as a pressure medium 
or you can use a vacuum pump to suck the gas from the atmosphere or suck the gas from the pipeline. So, it can be kind of as a vacuum system. So, we will discuss about the pressure system and vacuum system later on. So, it can be used either in the pressure system, it means again, it means suppose this is the compressor, I am blowing the air here and moving the solids inside. So, this is being transported, this is called pressure and this is a compressor. And if I am using instead of this or uh, here if I connected something which is a vacuum pump, then what will happen the solid will be moving the gas will be moving suppose this is coming from some hopper. So, this will be shoved inside and the solid will be moving here. So, because the solid volume fraction is very very small it can be operated both in terms of the vacuum in terms of the pressure in terms of the both vacuum and pressure. So, that is uh, the good thing about it, but the most disadvantage which I said that it is a least economical. Why? Because you are putting lot of energy and you are transferring very low amount of the solids. So, solid loading is very very low, solid transportation is very very low. So, energy required to transfer per kg of the solid is very very high. So, it is very low economical to use this kind of a transportation system. Then high velocity create the pipe erosion because the pipe velocity the velocity is very high solids are moving also very high velocity. These solids will do lot of erosion because the velocity of the solids will be also very high. The velocity of the gases is also very high. So, there will be friction losses there will be losses because of the erosion and that erosion will because of that the pipe will be kind of being uh, kind of break very fast and erosion problem will be very severe. It is not suitable at all for fragile solids, the solids which can break the abbreviative and very large particle material. So, if you have a particle size which is very very large, you cannot use this because if you are using for the coarse particles, your velocity requirement will be enormous for the dilute phase things. So, it is almost kind of neg uh, kind of impossible to transfer the large particles by the dilute phase regime. So, almost ruled out. So, you can do the dilute phase regime transfer only through uh, for the fine particles which are very fine and very low density. So, that it can easily be transported, but still it will require a very high energy. So, it is not a very economical method to transfer, but is being used because of the requirement. If the requirement of the system is to have a continuous flow of the solid, you do not have any other option other than the pneumatic conveying. So, this is a typical photograph I have taken. Uh, for the pneumatic conveying you will almost not see able to see anything here in this photograph, but there are certain particles with, uh, kind of suspended the camera resolution was not very good you will not able to see much things here. This is the photograph taken from the literature and you see some of the solids here, but this is not exactly dilute phase regime this is the start of uh, kind of uh, uh, homogeneous uh, heterogeneous regime or you can say the immature homogeneous regime where some of the solids now start getting settled you can see that this is a vertical flow. So, some of the solids are near the bottom, but most of the solid are flowing at the center and the solids are moving kind of uniformly other than some chunk most of the solids are suspended uh, individually. So, these are kind of a dilute phase regime this is the real kind of a dilute phase regime where all the solid particles are suspended individually because the solid fraction is very very small less than 1 percent it is almost impossible to see the fines inside. So, this is uh, this now there is a dense phase this before starting the dense phase I just give the photograph of the dense phase. So, you see that this is the dense phase this is dunes or slug you can say or moving bed whatever you want to call it. So, it is moving as a slug or as a dunes uh, where the all the solids are being suspended at the bottom and it is moving you can see that the air on the top, but most of the solids are settled at the bottom or this is in the vertical regime you can see that most of the solids are suspended near the bottom and it is slowly moving towards the top as a moving bed. So, this is kind of a dense type regime where the solid moves as a chunk in the form of the slug dunes or in form of the moving bed. So, that is called the dense pneumatic conveying previous was the dilute pneumatic conveying where individual solids were suspended inside the pipeline and it was almost impossible to see anything. So, dense phase pneumatic conveying as I said that you are seeing kind of particles are being suspended in the gas. So, it is not like uh, any particles are being suspended it will move in form of the dunes or in form of the slug or in form of the moving bed. So, particles are no more suspended in the gas phase 
that is called the dense phase. It is more economical because now you require less air volume and you are transferring more amount of the solids. So, kind of that is why it is more economical. The only thing is the diameter of the pipe should be small and the maintenance cost here is very, very low because the erosion problem is very low, solids velocity is very low. So, the erosion does not take place, the only losses take place because of the friction and because of the friction the pipe material may get kind of eroded, but because the velocity is very less, the rate of erosion will be also very less. Then that is what I just explained that the velocity is very less, so less of uh, uh, this kind of uh, erosion rate will be also very, very less. The major important point for this is this that it can handle lot of solids, high throughput can be handled, it can transfer to a very high distance around 1 kilometer or 3000 feet you can transfer it easily. So, that is the better thing in the dense phase. The drawback is that it requires transporter for each input. Now, what is that? We will see that it means you will require a compressor in each line. If you have a multiple line in each line you will be required the compressor. So, it is not a kind of a continuous flow, it is kind of a batch flow or a kind of a pulsation flow. So, between the dilute and dense you have to you can tell it that it is a batch versus continuous. Here you are getting a pulse of the solid, you are getting the solid in terms of the pulsation. There in the dilute phase you are getting a continuous solid flow. So, it you can say that uh, one can compare it as a batch versus continuous, but if you can afford a pulsation then the dilute dense phase regime or dense phase pneumatic conveying is much, much better, much economical compared to the dilute phase things. Now, what is the disadvantage? The major disadvantage is the velocity is very low. So, you will see the slugging materials can move, uh, can moves in form of the plug. So, you will get a pulsation and then best, this is actually best for most of the application. So, this is the only thing which is very, very critical that it is uh, discontinuous, but most of the application it is more than sufficient to have a discontinuous operation because the basic aim of the pneumatic conveying is to transfer the liquid solid from one place to the another place. Okay. You can make the operation continuous by making it as a moving bed condition, but that require a big power or you can fluorize the system and make the particle fluidizing and then you can make it continuous and you can still transfer the solids. So, these are the advantages of something, but the major advantage what I will say is in terms of the energy because this is for the transportation. I definitely want to transfer more solid per unit energy I am spending on the transportation. So, in this case you can transfer the most of the solids because you are transferring the chunk of the solids, the throughput is very, very high. So, energy required to transfer per kg of amount of the so per amount of this uh, specific amount of the solid is much lower compared to the dilute phase regime. Now, these are the two things which I have already say discussed in one way, but this is the pictorial diagram. So, what you can have in the dilute phase regime, you will have a blower or a compressor of pressure is not very important because here the solid fraction is very, very low. So, what will happen? We will have a silos. Suppose I have a sil place where silos where the solid is being kept and I want to transfer the solid from this place to some another unit where we have to process the solids. Then what will happen? There will be a rotary valve through which the solids will be actually put in the this pipeline. The air will be blown through the blower because the solid loading is very, very low. The blower will do the job. We need a higher velocity. We need, do not need high pressure. So, what will happen? The solid will fall down in the pipeline and they will be flown up with the kind of a blown up you can say or flow with the uh, gases and they will be transferred to the, the next silos or next location where it has to be processed. And you can see that these are uniformly solids distributed across the pipeline and there is a continuous flow of the solids is coming here. So, that is called dilute phase regime. Now, in the dense phase regime what will happen? There will be a silos you require an additional transporter because you need to now push the solid here. So, that is why this is called transporter and that is what I said that if you have a multiple input then what will happen? You will have a multiple transporter requirement here. What will happen? If suppose I have a second input through which also I have to transfer the solid then I will just put another silos here with a rotary valve and this silo will again dump the solids in the same pipeline. So, I do not need anything extra arrangement other than the silos of the solids which will be picked from the another location. But if you have a dense stage, every location you need a transporter. Now, what does transporter do? Actually, there is so here there is a silos. In the silos, the flows actually come from the silos to the uh, this. Uh, it comes to the transporter. 
what the transporter does transporters is being operated at a high pressure so there is a compressor high pressure compressor which actually pump uh, kind of compress the air and then it flows the air at a control flow rate into the transporter so this regime is being pressurized and the solid is actually falling in this regime so once the solid will fall here the pressure will be maintained now the inlet valve will be open based on in such a way that the pressure balance can be taken place neither if the pressure here will be less then the, there will be no flow of the solids so the pressure balance is a very very critical thing here so that's why we used to have a level controller to control the level in the silos of the solid layer also and the gas layer also that some of the gas is being recycled here so that the silos can also be compressed and the solid smooth solid flow can take place now the transporter the solid will be collected it will be pressurized now once it will be pressurized it will flow in the pipeline but it will be flow in form of the slug so you see that it will be flow in form of the slug plug dune flow or fluidized bed kind of but this will be a kind of a dense bed where the plug will be formation or slug formation will be there or dune formation will be there it will be flow in form of the slug and you will see a pulsating regime of the solids so what will happen you will see the solid then you will see gas then again you will see solid so the pulsation will take place now if suppose i have another silo here then again i need another transporter so the transporter need to be placed so that it can push the solid again into the same line so dense phage uh, conveying this is a problem that every location if you have a multiple input you should have a multiple transporter also while in the dilute phase regime that is not the case but the problem is in the dilute phase regime require much more energy to transfer the same amount of the solid compared to the dense phase regime so with this we will start our discussion again in the next class <laughs>